stuff like that. I mean, sooner or later, somebody was bound to find out who I am. Tony's stepmother, huh? She doesn't seem old enough. Well, Mr. Ward married her when he was about 65 or 70, I guess. And then he died and left her a lot of money, huh? Yeah, how'd you know? I guessed it, just from what you told me. Well, the thing is, he left her practically everything. What about Tony? Well, I don't think he got hardly anything. But you would have to ask my mother. But I do know one thing. Dorian and Tony don't like each other at all. Well, I can see why you might resent her. I mean, if she got the inheritance. Well, Mrs. Ward doesn't like him either. Really? Why? I don't know. Do you like him? It's okay, Skipper. Sorry, I didn't mean to uh, put you on the spot uh, there. It's all right. Yeah, he's all right, I guess. Hey, I better go get washed up. Okay. I don't know why you are giving me such a hard time about it. I'm sorry now that I even brought the subject up. Well, why did you bring it up? I was just making simple conversation. I didn't even think it was part of my session time. My God, when a man literally almost walked by from the dead, I think that deserves something. Well, that pleased you. Pleased me. Well, I got that impression. All right. It pleased me. I was glad for Brian. He seemed so happy and proud. To realize the complications of the run. Yes, Pat will have to make a few adjustments in her life. Well, not only that, Pat and Tony. After all, he is your stepson. You think that I owe him some kind of family loyalty? Don't you? Tony Lord forfeited any right to expect any friendship or loyalty from me a long time ago. Listen, Will, don't you be misled by his charm. That man is a terrible liar. He said awful things about me. He lied about me. I'm surprised you never heard about him. Well, all the times that I talked to him, he never once mentioned your name. I find that very hard to believe. He had more important things on his mind. All right. Tony has made terrible accusations about me, both before and after Victor's death. Like, I deprived him of his rightful inheritance. Did you? Of course not. My God, there was plenty of money for both of us. Oh, no. Tony Lord was his own worst enemy as far as Victor was concerned. But Victor was no fool. He knew that Tony loathed and resented him, so he retaliated the only way that he knew how. Tony couldn't accept that, and he had to blame someone, and I was handy. I wish it were otherwise, but... <sighs> You'll have to agree with me, Will. This is a realistic world. People should know who their enemies are, and how to protect themselves against them. It's an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. Now, is it wrong for me to think that? I haven't said a word. Don't you agree? Don't you think I'm justified? I think you've done a very good job of justifying yourself, don't you? Just what does that mean? I mean exactly what I say. And what do you know? I tied this up. Oh, thank you. I feel fine. 
I fell in love with a wonderful man. That's simple. No. First, I fought it because I, I felt that I had been caught. And um, that was something awful I'd done, something sinful. And then I went away to a missionary in South America. And when he came back, he was uh, still there. Yes. And I still loved him. So you left the order and you married him. And I bet you haven't regretted it, right? I'd like to meet him sometime. He must be quite a guy. Yes. He I'm sorry, it's Jenny. Okay, I'm... it's all right. I, I can talk about it now. It's been two years. So, here we are. Two fallen away religious of Landview Hospital. Maybe we ought to form an organization or something. Maybe so, but uh, if I don't get back to work, Dr. Jansen is going to fire me. Thank you very much for the lunch Hey, remember? Yeah. My pleasure. We'll do it again, okay, Jenny? You go ahead. I'll, I'll see you. Okay. Thanks. See you later. I met him quite by chance this morning. 
I stopped at Pat's and there he was. Oh, we open a whole can of worms if we go near that story, don't you? Absolutely. Good. Well, woman, where is my son? Huh? Oh, well, he's upstairs with Miss Higgins. He just woke up from his nap. I'll get him for you. Why don't you make Dorian a drink? Sure. Oh, no, I'm, I'm fine, thank you. Are you, Joe? Thank you. 
Kendall. What's going to happen to Pat? I mean, are they still uh, married in the uh, eyes of the law? Well, my guess would be yes. You mean Paul could assert his rights as a husband and a father and get the two, and that would leave Tony out in the cold? Well, I don't know. Uh, uh, I really don't know. I, Pat would uh, have something to say about that, wouldn't you? I suppose so, but... Uh, Paul, uh, uh... Paul's been gone uh, four years. It's, it's, a, it's a long time. Pat must have expected she would, would meet somebody else. Yes, but it's really too bad they couldn't have told her that he was alive.
be an adult, Brad, and a businessman, which means you don't let your emotions interfere with your professional life. Which should I let Aaron the boys interfere with it? It's a cheap shot, kid. Yeah, well, if the shoe fits. Hey, guys, what are you doing? Well, that's what I'd like to know. Just exactly what are you doing, Marco? Hey, I just came in to see how things are going. Well, you can tell Dorian that I don't need you. Actually, you can tell Dorian that things are fine here. Well, maybe I should stick around for a little bit to make sure everything's really working. Don't say your breath. Tony won't be able to be with Pat 
so he'll come crawling back to me and he'll say how wrong he was and that it's me he really loves. In your fantasy, do you take him back? No, I don't. Don't marry, it worries me. I realize if I really work this thing out, I wouldn't be thinking things like this. Look, this is a transition period for you, Kathy, and in that respect, you are caught in the middle. You, you haven't you haven't been able to, to quit your old life and you haven't been able to, to start your new life yet. You think that I'm ever going to give up my old life? I mean emotionally? Of course you're sure. When things start to happen, of course you're right now you've got nothing, so you have to hold on to your old life. Otherwise you'd have nothing, you'd be empty. But as soon as the future becomes tangible, as soon as it becomes your present, and the past isn't going to be so important anymore. Something you're incredible. No, you are. You. Somehow you always seem to understand me. You, you help me to understand myself. I actually believe when I talk to you that one day I just might be a healthy person. Well, I don't think you're that far away either. I got to tell you something, Kathy. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of your struggle and, and how much you've you've grown in such a short time. I, it's a pleasure to watch you grow. Well, it was a headache. Joe suddenly got hit with it. Is that true, really? Yeah. Fine. Thank you, man. I certainly don't envy that Dr. Larry. 
And, and I'll tell you something, Karen, your sense of value scares the hell out of me.